Good morning and welcome to you all. I was just saying before, it looks like everyone's fallen out in church because you're all sitting separately where the green ticks are, especially, you know, those of you sitting separately in your own families over there. Um, but uh, it is lovely to welcome you all today, either those of you who are here in church, those of you who are joining us on Zoom, and those of you who are joining us on Facebook, I can't see you waving back at me, but I'll just hope that you are, um, all the different platforms that we have our service on at 10.30. Um, don't panic that I've taken my mask off. Um, I am allowed to do so, and for those of you who will be reading either today or in the coming weeks, you very kindly volunteered for that, you can also take your mask off whilst you're doing the reading at the lectern or else it makes it quite difficult for people to hear. So uh, that's just why I've taken mine off. I am allowed to do so. You don't have to report to me. So we turn to our order of service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect, which is our special prayer for today. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So would you please be seated for our first Bible reading today.
I'd like to invite those of you in church, please, to stand. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he didn't dismiss the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? It's been one of those weeks this week where uncharacteristically for me, I found it really hard to knuckle down to the work I've needed to do. Now you can ask my mum, she'll tell you I'm a complete workaholic normally, so I don't know really what's been wrong. Everything's been ticked off my list that I've needed to get done, but it has been more by luck than judgement, I have to confess. But I was having a chat to one of my neighbours about all of this, and he said he blamed it on the fact that we've still got these extra restrictions going on. I thought it sounded like a good excuse to me anyway. And the fact that the information about COVID-19 seems almost all-consuming and quite overwhelming once again. And we got on to talk about how all this time and the restrictions and everything like that had taught us what the important things of life are truly are. Yes, it's nice to go out for a meal, but actually it's about being with family and friends that's so much more important. And those are the things that we miss being with our loved ones. So having the unexpected opportunity to go to Brockholes yesterday with Mum and meet up with Abel, Stephen and Joseph, Yes, we were outside, we were not in anyone's home or back garden, and we were two households meeting up. Um, it seemed like a great idea. We went and had a look at the ducks. We watched Joseph play on the playground. He's only three, for those of you who don't know that Joseph is my nephew. Um, we wandered about, and we had a picnic lunch from the picnic basket. We saw a heron in flight, dragonflies, butterflies and yes even more ducks there were smiles all around when i came out of the shop with a little cuddly bunny rabbit for joseph to go with his little cuddly duck that Abel and stephen had bought him there were lots of smiles giggles and a good time was had by all it was a lovely couple of hours relaxing not really doing anything very much but enjoying the company and the views in a very simple way Times like this remind us of the value of that rest and relaxation that we're not always very good at taking. It's a reminder as well that it doesn't have to be all bells and whistles to have a really good time. And in a second reference to last week's sermon, yes, Mum and I stopped for an ice cream on the way home. Today, in our Gospel reading, we have another familiar story. That's a great thing about this time. We have lots and lots of really good and really familiar stories. 
But we, before we get to the whole walking on water part of the passage, Jesus focuses on that rest and relaxation, on that retreat and prayer that even he needs to experience to be refreshed and recharged to, tra- to tackle his work afresh. Jesus, by this point in Matthew's Gospel, is one who can draw a crowd, a sellout celebrity by today's standard. Yet it's not a string of top ten hits that Jesus brings, or the stand-up comedy. The crowd come to hear him preach, to teach, and to heal. In the crowd there are the infirm and those who care for them. There are friends, the curious, the fascinated, the antagonistic, the, and the tag We all like a crowd, although not at the moment, because we need to keep social distancing, of course. But even Jesus needed some time to himself, to look after himself. In last week's Gospel, Jesus forgoes his own care for the crowd's needs of that physical and spiritual healing and feeding, but not today. Jesus sends the disciples away on a boat and dismisses the crowd Then he goes up the mountain to pray. The disciples set off at evening, but find themselves in trouble as a storm blows up across the water. Jesus continues to pray. He does not panic. And it's early in the morning when the refreshed Jesus sets out and walks on the water towards the disciples. They, on the other hand, are terrified and are quite panic-stricken by this point. But Jesus tells them, don't worry, it's me coming towards you. Peter says, almost by way of a challenge, doesn't he? If it's really you, call me out of the boat and I will walk across to you. Peter climbs out of the boat and begins to walk towards Jesus. But he soon realises that there is a big difference between being with your friends in a storm in a boat to being out by yourself on a windswept sea. And Peter notices this and begins to sink. Jesus chastises him, but he still reaches out his hand to save him. They both get into the boat, the storm calms, and they are safe once more. Over the past few months, it's probably felt that we've often found ourselves in the midst of unexpected storms, that we've longed for a time of peace, of rest and relaxation, that we've spent time looking for Jesus, wanting to get out of the boat and grasp his hand for safety. Jesus focuses on retreat and prayer, on rest and relaxation, even in the busiest of times. For myself, over these last few months, I have found the discipline of doing morning and evening prayer very helpful, and I know that many of you who have joined me online each day have found exactly the same thing. It's almost felt like an anchor in our day. The rhythm of a simple service is important, as the familiar can be a lifeline to us. The reaching out of Jesus' hands to us and saying, don't panic, I am here in the storm, and I'm here in the peace and the calm. So let us give thanks for all that we have in our lives. The things that we've realised that we can easily take for granted, as well as those new things that we have discovered, perhaps for ourselves and about ourselves in these last few months. Let us rest and enjoy them, knowing that this refreshes us for doing God's work in the world. Amen. So I'd like to invite those of you here in church, please, to stand as we prepare to affirm our faith together by joining in the words of the Creed. So we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So would you please sit on here for our prayers of intercession today. Lord God, you are a very present help in trouble. You are ready to hear our cry and come to our aid. Help us not to be afraid, but to put our trust and our hope in you. Lord, you have created us out of love and for your love. We ask for your protection in the troubles and storms of life. We pray for all who are persecuted for their faith, for those whose lives are at risk, and those who are exhausted. Lord, we give you thanks for the different ways that we can join together in worship, in person and online. We pray for those who are making their own prayers at home this day. We pray, Lord, for those who seek you, for those who stretch out their hand to find you, for those who seek you in the familiar words of Scripture and through our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for all those who work on the sea, and especially for those who work on lifeboats to keep them safe. We remember today all who are caught up in storms, earthquakes, floods or droughts. We pray especially for those who set out on the sea, those migrant refugees who are seeking a better life. We pray for them. We pray for an end to the situations that force them out of their homes and lands. We pray for those who care for them and for the places where they are sent across our country. We continue to pray for the people of Beirut after the explosion this week, for those who have lost so much, their homes, their livelihoods, and for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the overwhelmed hospitals and those working in the search and rescue. Lord, we pray for peace in our world, for an end to warfare and conflict where it is found. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give you thanks for the safety and protection of our homes, as we have spent more time in them recently. We pray for those struggling with debt, or whose relationships have broken down. We pray for the work of shelter and other charities who look after those who are homeless, and for those who are forced to leave their homes and the places of shelter that they find. Lord, we pray for our town, especially for those who live and work in Rose Hill Terrace, Rydal Avenue and St Aidan's Avenue. We pray for our young people enjoying their school holidays and for those who teach, that all would be refreshed at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for your blessing on all who are worried, anxious, or worn down. For those who feel overwhelmed and unable to cope, we pray for all who are ill at home or in hospital, and those who care for them, especially those today who are battling coronavirus. We pray for Noah, Barbara, 
Luke, Sienna, Rosabella, Cameron, Jude, Jeff, Hazel, Margaret, Len, Emma, Raymond, Derek, Lorraine, Eleanor, David, Rachel, Lisa, Annette, Ruth, Emily, Brenda, James, Chloe, Rick, Laura, Wendy, Roy, Charlie, Morris, Margaret, Joyce, Mary, Marion, Joyce, Irene Wickers, Jeff, David Yates, Alan Dyer, and Edna Littler. Be with them and those who care for them and all we pray for in our hearts and minds today. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, stand by us when the last great storm seeks to overwhelm us and we feel that we are sinking beneath the waves. Help us to know that in you we will not perish, but have everlasting life. To you we commit all our loved ones departed. May they rejoice in your presence and in your peace. And so we pray for those who have died recently, praying for Alan Tootle, and for those whose anniversaries are this week, for Jean Kershaw, Peter Munro Scott, John Baines, Nora Holden, Donna Walsh, Margaret Mitchell, and William Watson. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we thank you that you are with us in both the storms and the peace of light. Help us this week to know your presence always surrounding us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I invite you please to stand. And after we've had our sentence and response, we obviously cannot physically share the peace together, so we've been encouraged everyone to wave and to create a wave of peace around church. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so we wave to one another to share the peace together. It's not every Sunday I have dinosaurs waved at me, I must confess. And sometimes it's very interesting standing here as to what's going on on the screen. So Matthew, it's lovely to see you. He's the one waving dinosaurs, it's not Doug and Anne that are waving dinosaurs at me. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Bless to you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. 
From the beginning you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, to shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with St. Peter and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we sit or kneel to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Everyone is welcome to come forward to receive the bread this morning. And um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we do it a pew at a time so as we can keep social distancing in church. So um, people come out one pew at a time, then go back, and then if the next pew comes, going down the centre and then the sides, um, that would be great. You're welcome to come forward to receive God's blessing if you're not confirmed to receive the, or to receive the bread.
Holy Father, who gathered us here around the table of your Son to share this meal with the whole household of God, in that new world where you reveal the fullness of your peace, gather people of every race and language to share in the eternal banquet of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We say together, Blessed to you, Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of light and giver of life. To you be glory and praise forever. In Jesus your light has shone out, and you have given your Holy Spirit as a mighty stream of life-giving water to refresh and renew the face of the earth. Let your light shine in us, that we might be beacons of justice and bearers of hope. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Just a couple of notices. As I mentioned last week, we will be resuming our Wednesday morning Eucharists from Wednesday the 2nd of September at 10 o'clock. I know some of you do come on a Wednesday as well. And also, you may remember what feels like years ago, but is actually only about five months ago, that some of you took Smarty Tubes home with you. And hopefully during lockdown you've been filling them up. So if you are now coming back to church in person and you have a Smarty Tube languishing on the side, you can bring it back. For those of you who are not coming back to church yet, you'll just have to hold on to them for a little bit longer and we'll collect them in probably next Easter or something like that. So, uh, But thank you in advance for bringing your Smarty Tubes back. So, have we any birthdays? Exciting news, wonderful things. Oh, oh there's hands going up over here. There's a great big pillar in the way, so I can't see who you're pointing to. Whose birthday? Whose birthday? got her birthday on on Wednesday and will you be having cake maybe oh you see the thing you'll learn about coming here quite regularly is that we are uh, well I say we in the loosest sense I actually mean me or we all like cake so uh, that's a very good thing well I hope you have a lovely day on Wednesday fortunately at the moment you know nobody's seeing anything very exciting for birthdays or all of that sort of thing so we'll wish you all a very happy birthday for this coming week. So I'll invite you please to stand. And as you leave church today, please take your service sheet with you. Don't leave it at the back of church, please take it with you. And we go out the door directly facing us. So that's the door we will be going out of this morning. So it all forms a nice one-way system. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.